Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Recruiting New Members. My name is Latrice Moore. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at our UNTF Frisco location. I'm super excited to be here with you all today to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, and that is recruitment, okay? So many times when we think about admissions, we think about new prospective students, their families, whether they're undergraduate students or they are graduate students students, graduate students, all of that kind of falls under the realm of admissions, right? We are kind of those gatekeepers for students um, to become members of our Mean Green family. So today's sold workshop will focus on sharing tips um, on how you can go about recruiting new members, just like our department recruits new students. Hopefully you'll be able to take some, some tips today that will help you be able to to recruit some new students. So um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. All righty. So again, just wanted to remind you what we're gonna be doing today. So if you have some, some paper, a pen, if you wanna jot some things down on your iPad, this would be the time to go and grab those materials, okay? We're gonna dive into how you can go about recruiting new members and market your organization to current members. So tip number one, okay? You wanna create a plan now. Most people can see making a plan as being something that can be overwhelming. Where do you start, right? There's so many things to consider. People's schedules don't even get me started on, you know, trying to find time for everybody in my particular student org to meet. Um, it can be difficult meeting, meeting that task. Well, hopefully when you are able to plan out time Give yourself time to come up with being able to plan out appropriately, okay? Um, but before you start that, I want you to think about your organization's purpose. So tip number one, we're going to create a plan. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to think about our organization's purpose, all right? What is the purpose of our organization? Why are we trying to recruit new members? To join what, right? Take a moment to think about that. All right. Now, if you're struggling or having a hard time identifying exactly what your organization's purpose is, I think you may need to revisit, right? Um, before recruiting anyone to anything, you need to know exactly what you are trying to do, right? What they're getting ready to join. And so if your purpose needs to be refined or tweaked a little bit, um, go ahead and do that prior to creating a plan for recruiting new members, okay? For those of you who do have an organization's purpose or already know that, right, or was able to um, review your constitution that you have turned in to be a registered student organization, right, you reviewed what that, what that mission or purpose was, um, I want you to think about examples of your purpose being displayed on a day-to-day. Right. So before we even start talking about recruiting new members, right, getting others to join our organization, we have to look in the mirror and do some self reflection a little bit. Right. So creating a plan helps us be able to begin that. So taking your mission or your purpose of your organization, give some examples of when you've been able to um, see your purpose being displayed either around campus, within the community, within your college. Um, how are you, how is your purpose being shown? If your purpose is to provide service to all mankind, right, what are examples of that, right? Is it being able to interact and host different um, events um, and you are allowing members to come together to provide different service opportunities, right? Give examples of that. Do you quantify what your purpose is, right? Do you have numbers of maybe how many um, goods you've been able to give to a local um, homeless shelter, right? Is that how you quantifying your purpose being shown? Just taking some time to really reflect, right? If you can't really depict how your purpose is being shown on a day-to-day -day or by each year, I think this is, again, where you are able to do a little bit more of that self-work as an organization to determine how we want to display our work in our organization. How do we know when we have done what we have set out to do? How do we know when we have reached that purpose, okay? You can also, um, a tip here to kind of 
brainstorming or revisiting your organization's purpose is being able to share your why, right? Take a minute and think about why you joined your organization. What, what sparked your interest? Um, what, why, again, getting to that why you're looking, why did you want to be a part of that, okay? Then I want you to think about why do you want others to join your organization? As we start to segue into really thinking about some of that, some of that recruitment, right, of new members, share why you want to do this. In the wonderful world of admissions, we spend a lot of time on identifying the reason why we want students to join the Mean Green family, right? We want them to be able to reach their academic goals, to go forth and be great in the real world, right? Uh, whether they are looking to um, earn more money, if they are, you know, returning back to school, or they're looking to get land that dream job, or they're looking to get published. Whatever it is, we, we keep that in mind. When we're interacting with prospective students, we have them share, why do they wanna to come to UNT? Why do they want to be a, a student in the College of Engineering, right? We have those conversations on why, because it allows us to be able to take that and connect it to the purpose, right? The purpose of wanting them to gain a higher education degree or to gain a career, to help them gain their career aspirations. When you are reflecting on why you joined your student organization, hopefully, I hope that it ties somewhere to that purpose, right? I hope that during your time while you're a part or a member of this organization, you have been able to display that purpose on a day to day. Okay. So again, thinking about these things helps you to be able to go about creating that initial plan of how to go about recruiting students. Something else that you want to consider is determine um, actionable and timely goals. Okay, goals. I'm sure you probably have heard that a lot, right? Okay, Latrice, I'm looking to create a plan on how to recruit new members, and you're telling me to create a goal. How do I go about doing that, right? Goals are not as difficult as I think some people can make them seem. What's difficult though, the difficult part about setting a goal is making sure that it's actionable and that it's timely, right? How do you know when you've reached that goal? Well, how do you determine it? Is it, do you have a particular, do you quantify it, right? Um, who's going to do what? Who's gonna take what action to help you get there? How do you know when you've made it? How do you know when you haven't been able to reach that goal, right? Um, so really kind of when you're determining um, those goals, we're looking to recruit, um, you know, 15 new members to our student organization, right? We have quantified it. We've, we've given an end date, which is the, by the end of the semester, semester. And now we're gonna work backwards and take action. How are we going to get there, right? And you bullet point um, who's going to do what. That kind of goes into the assigning roles to current members. You wanna make sure that everyone has a role to play when it comes to recruiting new members. So when you're creating those actionable and um, timely goals, you wanna make sure that everyone has their role that they need to play in that, okay? Creating goals and thinking about your why and thinking about your purpose can be difficult um, when, you're not un when you're unorganized, all right? Does everyone have access to the goals? Does everyone understand what our purpose is? Does everyone understand why we're doing what we're doing? Why we're a part of this organization, right? Um, you wanna make sure that all those things are written down and housed somewhere for everyone to be able to have access to. You wanna know how you're going to go about doing this, how you're gonna capture that data. An example of that would be, if we're having an event and we're in front of prospective new members, right? How do I capture their information so that I can follow up with them? Is it a Google Doc? Is it a sign-in sheet? What is it going to be, right? Is everyone dropping their contact information in the chat? If it's in a virtual event, thinking about ways that you can stay organized so that members who need to have access to it can continue to outreach to um, those prospective new members. And again, this is something that we'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation, but all of these bullet points you want to take into consideration when creating a plan on how to recruit new members. I feel like you guys got that, got tip number one down pretty well. 
okay? We're gonna segue into tip number two. You wanna show them the way. And when I say them, I'm talking about these new members, hello. Um, you wanna be a resource for these students, okay? What do I mean by being a resource? That means you as a student leader in your organization are gonna be available for questions and answers, right? From new members or prospective new members, right? Um, you wanna make sure that the proper contact information is located somewhere, right? Whether you are on campus labs, whether there has been a transition in leadership and you're new in your role, if you're the person that is supposed to be intaking the information from new members, you wanna make sure that your proper contact information has been listed somewhere, right? Um, you want it to also be available for students to be able to access. So that's something else to consider on where do we have our contact information housed? If it's on campus labs, is this the correct email? Is this an email that somebody checks, right? You wanna make sure that the proper contact information is listed. I can't tell you the countless ways that students are able to interact with admissions officers here at UNT, right? Our contact information is plastered everywhere, whether that is on the website, on printed materials that's getting mailed out to students on social media. There's tons of ways that you can ensure that people know or prospective um, new members know how to contact you. The second or third thing you want to be sure of when you're being a resource and showing new members the way is you want to know the steps for how to gain membership and general information about your student organization. Okay, so if you were to interact with a new member, a prospective new member, right? So they're not a new member just yet, but they could be. You're trying to recruit them. Um, if they were to ask you a question about how to go about joining your organization, do you know how to join the organization? Could you lead and guide them through the process on how to go about doing that? If you don't, this would be a really good time for you to do some, again, some of that reflection with the other student leaders um, to identify um, easy steps for folks to be able to follow and understand to ensure that they're able to know how to join said organization, okay? You wanna know general information about the org, whether that's programs that you've done in the past, things that you're planning to do in the future, um, whether that is the amount of service hours completed, number of current members, uh, all of those things, general information about your student org, the purpose of your student organization, which we talked about back in tip number one, right? These are all general general information that you want new members to know, right? New prospective members to know when you're going about recruiting them, okay? You want to also be able to provide proof of the experience. So as a new or prospective member in that organization, can you share or show me what it's like to be in the organization, right? Can you share videos or photos or testimonials from current members? That allows me to, to get a glimpse of what it's like to be in that student org, right? Folks are looking to feel connected and moved. Um, and so being able to visually show proof of those types of experiences allows for those prospective new members to feel connected, right? So if you get on the UNT website and you look up admissions, you'll see pictures, um, you will see um, charts, you'll see maps of ways that folks can connect with us, what it's like being a UNT student. We send out um, view books and a UNT view book, you may have gotten one um, on your journey to being a UNT student, but that view book gives you an inside look on what it looks like to be a member of the Mean Green family, right? We're able to depict that visually. Um, we have campus tours, right? So we encourage students to come on campus, walk around, get a feel. There, we're integrating them into our UNT experience, right? That allows them to create connection, which allows them to be like, oh, wow, I can see myself being here, right? Taking classes, eating in the union, um, going to this student org meeting, right? So think about ways that you're able to provide proof of that experience. You once again, be a resource for showing new prospective members the way. Lastly, you want to know the perks of being a member of said organization. Sometimes people want to know their return on investment. They want to know the bottom line. 
why should I be a part of this organization, right? If you're not able to share your why for joining the org, right, or why they should join based off of their purpose, maybe you can think about segueing the conversation to being more about the perks of membership, right? So there might, if you haven't thought about perks of you know, a membership in your student org could be something to consider, right? Again, that self-reflection piece. A little homework is kind of interwoven within this, uh, within this presentation. So you guys make sure that you take that time to be able to do so. Again, that extra thought. But again, knowing the perks of the membership. So is this something that looks really good on a resume? Are you able to articulate the transferable skills that being a part of this organization has allowed you to do? You might be thinking, Latrice, transferable skills, what are you talking about, right? Well, if you are a student leader within your organization and you've had to balance going to class, being a member in the student org that met once a week, twice a month, or they have you know, 10 programs within the spring semester, Whatever the case may be, if an employer was looking at your resume and you were able to articulate your ability to manage classes, right, taking, taking care of business in the classroom, and then also being involved on campus, that says a lot about what your time management skills, your ability to stay organized, your ability to be able to work with others within a team, right? So these are all perks that you would be able to share um, and help members be able to articulate, you know, on the resume or in an interview. So think about it. If there are other perks, right, uh, take that time to think about that within your organization for sure. And then you want to make sure that you are prepared to answer questions. A lot of new prospective members want to know, why should I give you my time? Why should I be involved in this organization? Again, if you're not able to capture them with your why, the purpose of the org, the perks of membership, right? Be able to maybe do some unpacking with the student or the prospective member. You know, what are you looking, what are you looking to get involved in here at UNT? What are your interests? Um, what do you want to do after you leave UNT, right? Maybe connect how this particular student org helps them be able to do X, Y, and Z after they leave. Or, hey, this organization has a large alumni network or network base, right? And so we have alums that took part in this organization that has gone off, gone on to do X, Y, and Z, right? They're owners of Fortune 500 companies, or they started a local nonprofit that you also sounded like you maybe have an interest in, right? Building those connections outside of, you know, um, uh, outside of the day-to-day -day that you may interact with while you're a student here at UNT only helps you for the future, right? And so that may be a way that you're able to, again, share those perks, but answer their questions um, that they may have related to your org. Or it could be a question that's pretty simple, like, what days of the week do y'all meet? Boom right? What time? How much time do I have to devote in this organization? Again, if you haven't thought about some of these things, this is some good material to bring back to some of your, um, to, to the other leaders in your student organization to discuss, right? Because all of this helps be able to create that recruitment plan for new members. It's important to know, and I said it in the last slide, I'm going to say it again here, it is the responsibility of the entire organization to recruit new members and meet the goals of the organization, okay? It re requires everybody. So everybody needs to be a resource, right? Everybody needs to know their why. Everybody needs to know the purpose. Everybody needs to know how to go about gaining membership. This requires a lot of self-work within the organization first, before even thinking about bringing new people on, right? So, so again, something to, something to consider. When we think about UNT and admissions, oh, you best believe you have even helped to recruit students here to UNT, all right? When you're walking around and you're repping the U, the N, and the T on your sweatshirt, on your t-shirt, on your sweatpants, right? All of that, when you're out in the community, when you're going back home and visiting with family, and you have some UNT um, swag on, right, clothing on, you are a representation of our, of our university. If you are out doing things that you probably don't need to be doing, right, that doesn't necessarily put you and or the university in a good light, know that onlookers that, that see you 
are already building these perceptions of what the university is about, right? Or making assumptions about the students that go there, right? So th that's something that you probably have not even even really truly thought about how in a lot of ways you are a person or you have a role in being able to recruit new members and growing our main green family just by your experiences, right? Um, so that is something to note. So tip number three, we're making our way, right? I'm giving you a lot of material. You're probably like, Latrice, I can barely keep up. But we'll slow it down just a little bit, right? Because tip three, and I've tried to make this pretty short and sweet for you all. Um, after tip three, we'll get into some marketing, all right? So tip number three, you want to make new members or new recruits, make them feel welcome. I know, simple. But believe it or not, in the wonderful world of recruitment, this could be hard, right? How do you make someone feel welcome? Someone who's maybe new to the area, new to UNT. How do you make a first time in college student feel welcome versus a current member who's been a current member or has been a member in your organization for the last three years, right? How do you make everyone still feel welcomed, feel connected? You, you mainly want to think about pumping up the engagement within the organization, right? I'm gonna come at this from two perspectives. The first perspective is when you're looking to recruit new members, think about ways that they're able to engage with you, right? So are you, is your organization currently hosting events or tabling on campus? Are you visible on campus? How do people know that you're here, right? Is there a way that you can get new members to um, engage with you, prospective new members to engage with you? Think about some ways that you can get out there, get your name out there. Another way to help new members feel connected, prospective members feel connected, is ask them their name. It's the little things you'll be surprised on what makes someone feel connected or feel welcomed to want to join your organization by just doing something simple, like knowing their name, asking them their name, right? Um, rule of thumb, this is something that was always taught to me when you meet someone new, right? You know, say their name out loud say their name out loud, maybe a couple of times, uh, whether that's you say the na their name back to them, like, hi, my name is Latrice. Oh, Latrice, it's nice to meet you, right? Finding ways to be able to do that allows that memory, allows to trigger your brain to remember that person's name. Some of you were like, Latrice, it don't matter how many times I say that person's name, I'm not going to remember them, right? That's fine. That is okay. Um, find other ways that you can make someone feel um, welcomed or connected, whether that's maybe giving a compliment or, hey, I noticed you had a sticker on your laptop of that particular band. It's a band logo, right? I enjoy that band as well, right? Finding ways that you're able to connect with them allows them, know, allows them to know that you're listening, you're paying attention, you're observing servant, right? Um, it allows them to feel connected. You want to find ways to allow new members to get empowered and invested in the organization. So if, if you were a new member within the org, how can you get your hands dirty, right? How do you become in it to win it? I don't want to just say I belong to this particular organization just to say it. I want them to know that I am here to, re I'm ready to put in work, right? What can I do? So think about things that new members or prospective members can do within your organization um, right off the bat, right? They don't have to wait, you know, to go through an orientation of X, Y, and Z within the organization. They don't have to have completed this many service hours. They can immediately, what can they do the moment that they sign up to feel connected within this org? Because you have to understand when connecting someone, you want to do it once someone has committed to being a part of your organization, right? They're like, okay, I'm in. I want to be a part of this. They've signed up. They've done all of the things. How do you keep them engaged? That retention piece is a whole nother presentation, right? How do you keep people retained within the organization? 
But how do you keep them captured, especially if they're a new member, they don't really know what's going on or, you know, they may not know anyone, but maybe you or, you know, leadership within the organization, ways that you can empower them to invest in the organization helps later down the helps later down the road when it comes to retaining them within the org. So just keep that in mind as well, maybe coming up with a list of, okay, well, if um, all 15 of these new members were to join, what are some things that we can have them do right when they start off, right? That allows them to learn and grow more about our organization, as well as helps them feel connected within it. You then want to think about creative ways to collaborate with other organizations. So best believe you're not the only one recruiting new members. Okay, you're not, the, we're not, UNT is not the only school trying to have students, right? So think about ways that you can creatively collaborate with other orgs. Hey, I know that y'all are getting ready to recruit new members and we're trying to recruit new members. Let's have a new recruitment member event or program or let's table you know, think think outside the box on how you can collaborate with each other um, and not have to reinvent the wheel. I know some of this is like, oh, we have to do all of this thinking. Oh my gosh, you know, um, <laughs> lean on your fellow student orgs to assist and help you with that, with that process as well. Um, within UNT, we have collaborations um, and partnerships with local um, high schools within our particular territories. We have conversations with um, our community colleges that help us be able to be a seamless transfer for our transfer students or our dual credit students. We're, we're having those conversations, right? Because we know the process to getting students enrolled into college, um, there are many steps that they need to take. And so how early can we assist and help them throughout that process? So that's just another way that we go about collaborating with um, other higher education um, entities to help be able to help us do our job and that is recruiting students. Um, something, uh, some food for thought, and this is kind of when I kind of swift switch, excuse me, the perspective. So earlier we were talking about, you know, if you were trying to recruit new prospective members, right? And then I had mentioned that little blurb about you want to make sure that you retain them, right? Um, now I'm going to kind of talk about current members that you have within your organization. How can you publicly recognize them? How do you make it? your current members feel welcome, right? So you've already done the process. They're already part of the student org. How do you make them feel seen, welcomed, appreciated? How do you empower them to remain within the organization, right? Still put in that same amount of work that they put in when they first started. How do you do it? Some of you may be thinking, um, well, we do a newsletter or we do shout outs on social media. We do member spotlights, right? Those are just examples. Some of you may already be doing that, which is great. For those of you who are not, something to consider, right? Here you are attending a presentation about how to recruit new members. And you're also struggling with being able to retain members that you already have. Some of you are like, well, some of them, you know, transitioned because they graduated. Shout out to them. That's why they're here. Graduation. Love that. Some of you are like, well, we had 25 members and then psh, like 15 of them just disappeared. I don't really know what happened. They stopped being as engaged with us. And engagement could pause or stop completely for a multitude of reasons. Um, but the things that you can have control over, um, I encourage you to think about ways that you can kind of control the situation as much as possible, right? So um, retention is, is huge. So thinking about ways that you can make your current members feel welcomed, empowered, invested in the organization um, can also require some brainstorming. Um, spotlights, shout outs, um, you know, newsletters, uh, goodie bags, you know, like it could be, it can be an assortment of different things. I think it's doing the work to find out how the members of your organization like to be recognized. You can always ask that question, you know, you don't even have to do all of the heavy lifting yourself. You can literally at your next meeting ask, how do you like to be recognized, right? 
Um, UNT, there's an assortment of different awards. Faculty and staff are able to um, win, right? Sometimes they're nominated by their peers or fellow colleagues. Um, and then if selected, they're able to win awards, right? Um, does your organization, can your organization incorporate, you know, fun little awards or uh, titles that you want to be able to give them to positively recognize them um, for the hard work that they're doing uh, within your organization. So food for thought, things to think about. So we have discussed tip one, tip two, and tip three, right? Um, tip one, we are wanting folks to be able to create a plan, right? Whenever you're going into being able to recruit new members, you wanna keep that in mind. How do you go about doing it? Revisit that the purpose, your why, create those goals, assign roles to um, current members. You wanna create a timeline, right? Timeline is huge, checkpoints. When are we checking in on our goal of recruiting 15 members? Does that happen? you know, two months into the semester, and then the last two months of the semester, you kind of want to be able to create those checkpoints for yourself. Tip number two, we talked about showing them the way, being a resource, right? Being able to answer Q&A, know the steps on how to join your org, provide proof of the experience, know the perks, be prepared to answer those questions, right? And knowing that it's the responsibility of the entire organization to recruit new members. And then lastly, um, tip number three, make them feel welcome. And this applies for our new members as well as current members, okay? So now that you have got the gist, right, of how to go about recruiting um, new members, let's take a look about marketing because marketing is a whole nother part to the recruitment process, right? And so tip number four, is being able to leverage your technology. What do I mean by that? Well, mainly it means utilizes, utilize the resources that you got, right? So um, the wonderful student activities has um, a resource that is called uh, Campus Labs. You all are probably already familiar with it. There are so many bells and whistles on that thing. Um, utilize it to the best of your ability, right? Because truly it is a one-stop shop for new and current members to find out information about your student organization. Now, this is, you know, to me, a no-brainer, but I have to say it. Make sure that your information on your um, Campus Lab site is updated. Right now, of course, that's a requirement for you to have to do each time um, a new semester begins, right? When you're re-registering your organization to be active on campus. Um, but even if there are changes after, right, that orientation um, deadline, right, or the re-registration deadlines, if there is an email address that um, is not working or you guys have decided to change, right, make sure that it is updated on that website. I can't tell you how many times students are looking on there to find their way, right, and they come up to a dead end because they can't get in contact with anybody within the organization. So make sure that that contact information is correct and it is something that is checked pretty often, right? Because you never wanna miss an opportunity to connect with a prospective new member, right? Um, the next thing you wanna be able to do is um, plan your events by the semester or year, right? And how can you utilize technology to be able to do that? So um, whether you are utilizing, you know, a, a Google Talk, like I mentioned, or you're utilizing, you know, Microsoft, you're utilizing Outlook to set calendar appointments and reminders, find ways for you to be able to think ahead, right? Um, as much as you can. So if you're having a um, so start of the semester, if there are opportunities for members of your student organization to get together prior to the start of the semester to plan out your events for the semester or for the year, um, consider being able to do that, right? Um, and so saving all of those plans um, and those action items and to-do lists and who's going to do what, save that in a space where everyone has access to be able to see it. Um, that way that they can be reminded that, hey, oh yeah, my name is next to this particular um, 
agenda item. I need to make sure I do that by you know, the next meeting or the next time we meet. So something to consider being able to utilize technology to help set those reminders for yourself. The next thing would be design and brand all your marketing, all your marketing that goes online, virtually, all of your marketing that may be posted around campus or pushed into the grounds, right? All those yard signs around campus. You want to make sure that your brand is listed there, right? This includes maybe whether that be a logo. If your organization doesn't have a logo, maybe consider it, right? Um, if you don't have handles for certain, or including your um, social media handles, maybe on all of your marketing, because if I see, hey, we're having this event and you know, and it's happening on this day and at this time and at this location. And let's say it requires me to register for the event. I want to make sure that once I register that I'm being followed up with. Did, did they receive my registration? Is there something I need to do after I've registered? You just want to have that contact information listed there. So um, keep that in mind when you are printing um, uh, printed mar marketing materials, or if it's visually, if it's listed online, making sure that it has it there. Sometimes, you know, some student organizations or, or companies, right, um, or UNT will utilize um, themes when it comes to like color scheme, right? So um, on the UNT website, there is a list of approved colors that can be utilized when doing printed marketing, when you're printing the logo on a t-shirt. There's all of these like brand guidelines that we have to follow to ensure that everything always equals back up to our brand. We never want to be off brand right? You want to be on brand. So um, consider what those guidelines may be for your organization, because um, once folks are able to know these particular colors or this particular symbol, they're able to associate that with your organization, right? If they see it on campus, they're like, oh, wow, you know, this particular organization has always got an event going on. Or, oh, man, this organization is always giving away, you know, uh, a pizza slice on Tuesdays, you know, for students who X, Y, and Z. There's all these different things that how your brand may be attached to um, those particular designs, right? Your logo may be attached to your brand on different designs. So things to consider when you are um, designing and branding your marketing materials. There's tons of technology templates that can be used out there to create those printed and virtual marketing um, designs. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. I'm not endorsed by Canva by any means, but um, I know that that is a pretty popular site to get um, some of those printed um, and visual kind of designs created. So something to consider. And there's a free version, so why not? Um, and then lastly, um, tip number four on how you can go about marketing your um, student organization to prospective um, new members would be utilizing various uh, platforms to outreach. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, we hit it hard on Twitter. That's where the new members are at. That's where we go. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter all day. Um, but there are other folks that may not be um, on Twitter as often or as frequent. So if all you're doing is pubbing your events on Twitter, knowing that you may be missing a population of prospective new members because they're not on Twitter, right? So think about being able to outreach on various different platforms. So whether that's the different social medias, whether that we have flyers posted in different buildings around campus, whether we're going to do um, yard signs, right? Um, I know that there are some spaces you're able to put down those uh, like design, like stickers, like concrete stickers on campus. Uh, think about creatively how you're able to outreach to new members, right? Um, what sets your organization apart when you are at a tabling event? 
Do you have really cool pictures that are on your table? Do you have um, like a random figure um, that is sitting on your table where it, it sparks up a question or it sparks, it's a conversational starter, right? Conversation starter. So think about, again, those different ways that you're able to outreach and gain um, folks' attention in, to be a part or to ask the question about your student organization, okay? Um, and so lastly, this is huge. Again, we've talked about how to recruit new members. We talked a little bit about retaining current members and how to have and how to empower them. We've talked about how to market and leverage your technology when you are looking to recruit new members. Lastly, this is the huge, the, the biggest tip of them all. You want to make sure that you're having fun throughout this process, right? You joined your organization for a, a purpose, right? You have a passion in X, Y, and Z. And that's great, right? Allow those things to creatively come out when you're embarking on this journey to recruit new members, right? Um, have fun with it. You don't have to be a Canva genius. I get it right? Maybe look into the strengths and finding those strengths in your other members, other student leaders within your organization, and have them work on those passion projects to help move your organization forward. Or maybe, right, when you're out recruiting new members, ask them strengths about themselves, right? Because you all may be, need, may be in need of someone who's really good at, at outreach and connecting and creatively being able to get the word out there for your particular organization. Who knows? You could be talking to that next officer or that next member uh, committee lead um, at your next tabling event, right? Or when you're walking down the hallway, um, when you're repping your organization's logo on your shirt, you never know who you're going to come across. So just always be prepared um, to ha and have fun while you're doing it. Make it your own. That is lastly the last tip on how to recruit new members and market for your org. I've enjoyed being able to present to you today. If you have any questions or any follow up, please reach out to the student activities office. Um, they will connect you with myself. Um, again, I'm an admissions officer here. And so recruitment is kind of like the name of my game. Um, so I'm here to help as much as possible. I enjoyed you all today and I hope you have a great rest of your semester.